African Origin of Molecular Genetics with which at was always an attempt to ask the question how do we represent smaller units of living entities in symbolic and mathematical language in our exploration of ancient information and biochemical analysis here we will mean the examination of instructive chemical substances found in all living cells the substances that direct cellular function establish an organisms outside appearance and provide the link between generations in every organismal kind today however the disciplines that are known to discuss the information polymer in technical sense include biochemistry, cytology, genetics, physiology, microbiology, embryology, and evolution. Our ancestors in the Nile Valley region, again as we hope to continue showing, laid the molecular background for the mastery of these fields in ancient time. African people practiced biotechnology, especially in making bread, wine, and cheese. We cannot underestimate their understanding of biochemistry. For more than 8,000 years before any written European records could be made, African people made series of pictographic and sculptural acts of writing to document on their theory and practice of the subject of molecular biology. In Pharaonic Africa, for example, dough would be rice with the use of yeast to help in making leavened bread. Indeed, fruit juice became alcoholic beverage. Fruit juice alcohol had the same effect as alcohol that people drink today. In fact, it was known long ago that fruit juice became wine. This is not news. And wine that was rich in alcoholic content made the now well-known Osirian divinity the holiness of viticulture as well as what would become blood and flesh for the sacrament of the Eucharists. Moreover, milk was known to sour, brew organisms in it from that came oil and cheese in the form of dairy products in ancient Africa. Our ancestors in Africa also knew quite well the reasons for the fermentation procedure. They knew, for example, that microorganisms had a tremendous responsibility for the process of fermentation. Much of these findings rested on dealings with food, flavor, and texture. Among the microorganisms they employed are bacteria, fungi, and yeast. To these ancients, for example, yeast were central to the food industry. African fermented sugar to produce the alcohol in beer, uh, as we have seen in wine making. Production of carbon dioxide as a gas in brewery was responsible for the bulbs used to live and bread. It was known that a particular kind of microorganisms, later termed bacteria, that we have mentioned, helps to ferment milk or cream. The fermented milk was used in such foods as cheese, yogurt, and sour milk. The ancients further knew in the later time even 
in other regions of the world, and not only in Africa, that the curing of harm and the pickling of cucumbers were biochemical practices that to us now can be rightly termed applied molecular biology of the ancient people. This was therefore not an exclusive African practice. The Pharaonic Africa, however, only happens to have anterior and abundance of record. Another form of biotechnology utilizing the knowledge of macromolecule that existed in antiquity was fermentation by fungi. Fermented fungi even today are being used in foods such as tempeh, misco and soy sauce. Our African ancestors practiced indigenous forms of biotechnology when working with animals and plants. The Nilots were known to be fond of selecting and deciding the best animals and crops, providing seeds for later exploits. Indeed, this was the beginning of agriculture, where seeds from the most fruitful plants were saved. The seeds were then used for the next plantation season for hope of greater yields. In the same way, wild animals were domesticated for food, fibers, and hides. And here too, selective breeding was practiced. The animals of special kinds, particularly those whose genetic formation had been determined, now we understand at a molecular level, helped in physical works due to their appropriate external appearance. The special animals helped our ancestors in such jobs as carrying heavy load, plowing land for agriculture, and symbols of totem. Molecular manipulation of DNA and RNA molecules first occurred more than 3,000 years ago. In those ancient times, the treatment of life took a context of inheritance study. These studies involved whole organisms. The living organisms were understood to involve physical expressions through sexual reproduction that enabled visible, that is, physical changes in their bodily makeup as a whole. The manipulation of physical expression was then followed by direct and precise surgical control of molecular changes. This became the recorded cut and paste techniques of Ujad science. With the Ujad was always an attempt to ask the question, how do we represent smaller units of living entities in symbolic mathematical language. In efforts to answer this question came the first floor of genetic information, something discussed in the Pharaonic Egypt as the restoration of Horus I. With Ujat was always an attempt to ask the question, how do we represent smaller units of living entities in symbolic and mathematical language? With Ujad was always an attempt to ask the question, how do we represent smaller units of living entities in symbolic mathematical language?